There are two things that this channel was built on from its inception. Essentially, it was Tom McDonald videos, reaction videos that got a lot of traction, but also, and mainly, it was Candace Owens, who back in the day, she was a firestorm and anything we did on her got us a lot of views, a lot of coverage, and rightfully so, because Candace Owens is a phenomenal communicator. Well, I've been trying to avoid this particular discussion, but it seems like I have to because it is a a, a, a really interesting dialogue between Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens that's been put out in the open for everyone to see. And it's really embarrassing. And I'll tell you who I feel it's embarrassing for. I'll tell you now, spoiler, it's not Candace. But there's reasons for that. And this point of view of each of these individuals, I'm going to explain that. I'm going to tell you about my point of view as well. But I'm also going to react to a valuetainment clip as well as the timeline from the Gateway Pundit to kind of fill you in show you what's going on and react to it and also tell you how I feel we should respond to this moving forward. All right, so let's kick this off with how this sort of started. I say sort of because really Kanye and Candace were friends and Ben Shapiro got mad at Kanye and Candace never disavowed Kanye and that sort of had the recent beef prior to this between Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. So it kind of kicked off again after the debate where you had Vivek Ramaswamy going after Nikki Haley, who is a strong supporter of Israel from a Zionistic point of view. And that's Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro is 100% for Israel. He's 100% for the Zionist cause. And what Zionism means, and that's you've heard that before, I'm sure, but a lot of times it's put as a derogatory term. It's not a derogatory term. Think of Zionism as America first. It's that, Amer that if Israel, in this case, has the right to rule. And that Zionism movement came out during a time in the 40s and before, 1940s and before, where countries were trying to have their own first initiatives. You had Italy first. You had Germany first. You had Great Britain first. You had all these other countries first. The Ottoman Empire first. All these countries wanted their own first. And so that was a nationalistic movement. So Zionism just came out from that. So it's nothing more, nothing less. So, but Nikki Haley being the fact that she is a Zionist pro-Israel person, Ben Shapiro is a big supporter of her. So what happened essentially was Candace Owens sort of made a jive here talking about Nikki Haley. And I don't think that Ben Shapiro took it very well. Let's go and play this clip right here. I am here today to endorse Nikki Haley for president of Israel. I think she's earned that. I think Bibi Netanyahu is going through a very bad time right now. Support for Israel has virtually collapsed socially. If you're paying attention to the trends and you're paying attention to what people are watching, you're paying attention to the protests. And the one person that I think is capable of getting it back is Nikki Haley with enough money from foreign interest lobbies. So there it is, guys. I'm endorsing Nikki Haley, president of Israel. And you can see there that she actually had a little smirk on her face. That was all tongue in cheek uh, jest. And she went on to say other things too, while I'll cover here in a second that, that ties to that. Ben Shapiro was at this particular event. I'm not sure where he, where he was, but if you look at the woman in the lower right hand corner here, her face is like, what in the world? And so it's kind of hard to hear. I'll try and turn the volume up on the desktop here so you can hear a little better. But he responds to Candace Owens' comments with this. Check this out. Yes, uh, the, the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this is disgraceful. Without a doubt, I think it's disgraceful. He said her behavior is disgraceful if you missed that. I, 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 I can't that. Yeah, 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 has been ridiculous. It's not full sophistication. It's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying. And if I'm so look at this woman's face down here at the bottom right. She's like, what in the world? Let's go back to this article here. And so this particular tweet by Autumn Groper says, Ben Shapiro slams colleague Real Candace O for her, quote, absolutely disgraceful behavior, unquote, in front of a visibly shocked audience. Shapiro goes on saying her Fox sophistication on the issue is ridiculous. Tensions rising at Daily Wire. So obviously this is a big backlash here. This is on November 14th. This is about, let me see, three days ago. 
goes on here. Now, I'm going to play this clip here. This is also from Twitter. This is from the AF Post podcast. Check this out. Said is that explicit calls for genocide, which was stunning to me to see that in, mm. in, in Congress, are completely wrong. It is com- frankly crazy. I have not weighed in on the IDF's response in the same way that I, I have consistently said through every war, Ukraine and Russia, I don't want to be involved. I have said I don't want to be involved in Israel and Palestine, all these conflicts. My consistency seems to offend people, right? But I haven't made a single tweet or a single comment on IDF's response in Palestine. I haven't said a single thing about that. I have said it is okay. always sad when a child dies. And the lack of humanity that I have seen from both sides has been very troubling for me. But well, to, to say if, that if I have to say- weigh in and suddenly be, be, you know, wave an Israeli flag and say things that, you know, be, because you decide that you get to use my platform because it's personal to you, how is that fair to people? How is that fair? And then to then go a step further and to suggest that it, it might be anti-Semitic, which is basically silence is violence as a leftist tactic, to me feels very extreme. This is not about a geographical, geopolitical dispute between Israel and Palestine. This is about an ideological mission to rid the world of Israel and, and the Jews. That's what I think people misunderstand. Yeah, well, I, well, Jews live very comfortably in the United States of America, so they're not going to be, I mean, it, you know, obviously, Jews they are, lived comfortably in Germany before World yeah, War, but before they, they, Germany too. I, I, they did. I, Doctors, I lawyers, really struggle. I really struggle when people start using, you know, Things that have happened in the past that are abhorrent, like slavery, to say that, like, if this doesn't happen, then slavery is going to be back. Or if this doesn't happen, then it's going to be the Holocaust, too. I think there's a lot more meaningful chatter and discussion that we can have. We don't have to resort to that kind of, you know. History um, repeats itself if you forget it. You know, you have to be conscious and Jews, especially. Unfortunately, I, I'm a true grandchild of all four of my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. So what do you the make of the Holocaust well? survivors and the Jewish people in New York City that are protesting on behalf of Palestine? That's a great question. I think- Yeah, I think that there's a a very strange, bizarre, um, I mean, it's the same people that you would condemn as the people of the white people who bow down to BLM protesters who hate themselves and feel a certain sense of guilt. Let's just stop here. I wanted to play that whole clip because a lot of that could be taken out of context. Candace admittedly said, look, I'm not into this whole war thing. I'm not going to talk about the the Ukraine conflict or the Palestine-Israel conflict. I'm keeping at a high level in terms of, you know, I don't like to see people die. And so that's the sentiment that I think we all have. Now, my personal opinion is that the Palestinians voted to have Hamas in place and Hamas has ignored their requests and they have victimized them, not giving them food, water, whatever, buying missiles and rockets, whatever, not, you know, and then using them as human shields. And so... Charlie Kirk even said himself, look, this whole thing is horrible, it's terrible, but when you use someone as a human shield and you tell people, we're going to go in there and we're going to bomb this area, remove these civilians out of this area because we're about to bomb this, this, this location, and to have Hamas say, no, we're not going to remove them because we need them there. And so what are you supposed to do? It's war, it's horrible, but on either side of it, we don't have to like the fact that innocent people are dying. And I think that's where... Candace is coming from. She's like, look, you know, I'm not for Hamas. I'm not for the terrorism, obviously. And I don't, especially in terms of calling for genocide on the, on the Hill is ridiculous. But she's trying to come at it from a pragmatic, from a high level uh, human, uh, humanitarian aspect. And I think we can all have that. But again, and I've said this before, Israel has the right to defend herself and Hamas simply needs to go. They are not, they're not helpful. And so how do you resolve that? The problem is when you take a position either way, you could be labeled as anti-Semitic or you could be labeled as someone who is, um, you know, a, 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 a warmongering Zionist, which I don't know what that even is, but you hear it on both sides. I think the key thing to understand is, is that you have an opinion that opinion should be be allowed to be expressed. And when it goes out into the ether, let the idea itself die or live on its own merits, which is one thing the left can't do. Their merits of their arguments are horrible, so they never are able to win, which is why they always try to suppress. And from what I'm seeing, essentially, is that Ben 
in a lot of ways, is trying to suppress her opinion. And what makes this interesting is the fact that he is actually pseudo her boss, not really. I mean, he's a co-founder of Daily Wire, even though she went on to Hannity later saying, no, he's not. You know, um, I have a good relationship with the people who are, but it is an awkward situation. And we'll see a little bit later, it gets even more elevated beyond this, which is why I drove to do this video, because had it just been this, I'd have left it. But it gets escalated even higher. Ben doubles down, as you will find out a little bit later. Now we're going to the Valuetainment podcast here, and I'm going to show you some clips here. I'm not going to show you all the clips here, because I don't want to you know, violate any copyright here or any um, footage. But I am going to clip on some areas of it. I watched this entire clip, and I'm going to comment on what they're talking about. So you can go check out it for yourself to see what they say in full context. But I'm going to go through here and give you the points that the people on this podcast are making. And I think they're all very, very valid. And it seems to me they're all on Candace's side. I am too. I think what's going on is the fact that the responding back and forth is what's the problem. I don't think Ben's wrong. I think Ben's overly emotional on this. I think him attacking her in open, attacking her first is always a bad idea. You don't attack Candace Owens without you know, being 100% right. She's a destroyer of worlds when it comes to that sort of thing. Just go back and look at her history. Also, in Candace's defense, she's been right on a lot of things. The George Floyd thing early on, she was right about that. And she was right on other things as well. And I think she should be given the benefit of the doubt by Ben, especially when Ben himself didn't go after Matt Walsh on some things that he said about Israel as well. <laughs> this is not how people talk about their own countries. This is a uniquely modern American phenomenon. It's like a sickness, a mental sickness, where some of our leaders, or would-be leaders, profess greater admiration and love for and pride in foreign countries than their own. It's just a crazy thing to say. Again, Israel doesn't need us. We need them. If that's true, then how can you say that in one breath and then in the next breath tell us that it is imperative for the United States to help Israel. I thought you said they don't need us. I mean, they don't need us at all. We could not exist, according to you, and it would make a difference. You, you cannot say both of those things. You cannot say they desperately need us and also they don't need us. You really expect us to believe that America benefits more from its alliance than Israel benefits from that same alliance? That is nonsense. No, Israel greatly benefits from America. I don't think what Matt's saying is wrong either, but... If you're overly emotional on this issue, anything that's slightly questioning the stance on 100% Zionism, 100% Israel, um, then he takes it to the point where I can't even have a dialogue, which looks to me like he's trying to be like a leftist, which is very discouraging to see. I'd like to see more decorum from Ben, a little more open dialogue and discussion on this, because this is a complicated issue. And so to shut down discussion and to attack your own colleague you know, in public is really, to me, cruddy, quite frankly. So let's take a look at these clips here and now uh, comment as we go forward. First, put some yeah. words about, uh, you know, the difference between money and God and faith and all that. And she, he retweets it. Okay, so she, uh, here's what he's talking about here. So here, Candace Owens posted this. It's a, it's a verse, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. So essentially she had this particular tweet. It's a Bible verse. Blessed are the peacemakers. So it looks like she's trying to give an olive branch, which is, by the way, Jewish. You know, it's a Jewish tradition. And, but it doesn't quite work out because Ben actually comes back at her and says this. Fine, Yeah. Okay. And then she has another thing that she says after that. And she comes that taking money from Daily Wire somehow comes. So this is what she, this is what Ben Shapiro says here. He says, Candace. If you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Wow, he took two jumps there. He, he, he's so emotional on this. He just couldn't see the fact that she is referencing a, a verse that Jesus said. I believe this is the, um, on the Olive, uh, Sermon on the Mount, I believe, where he's talking about it's, it's, it's good to be a peacemaker. And he just doubles down on something and it's really to me it's 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 really a bad look for him tell her to quit really dude i mean and then we're gonna go to some more quotes from ben shapiro from back in the day to show you how he is anyway when it comes to this public space it's like he's unhinged it's like he has no decorum 
and it's like a it's like a school child almost, like like, like a little you know, like, like a little ad adolescent kid who can't control his thoughts and emotions in a way that's constructive, especially coming from someone like Ben Shapiro, who's so smart, he's so uh, articulate, he is so quick on his feet and thoughtful, and especially when it comes to his college campuses, he's really good. But when stuff like this is like out of context, out of character almost, it's almost as if he didn't even write this. But you know, I'm sure he did because he wouldn't let anyone hold the pen for his Twitter feed, I'm sure. So she goes on Tucker Carlson. Right. Well, so it's, is it a little, it's a little weird to see yourself, look, we all get things wrong. I certainly have gotten a lot of things wrong. I think it's fair to be attacked for getting it wrong. But if you get it right, and it's proven that you got it right, and in three instances it has been proven that you did on the biggest issues of the day, shouldn't the people who attacked you apologize? And shouldn't someone at least point out, hey, can so and was right about yeah, that? I don't yeah, that's what I was talking about before, about can some people give her the benefit of the doubt? I mean, I think she earns the respect from Ben Shapiro to, to do, to give, at least take her behind the scenes, take her to an office and actually air this out behind closed doors, which is what they're basically saying here in this particular podcast. Now, when Candace Owens responded back to Ben Shapiro, I thought it was extremely brilliant. And there's several reasons for that. What she did was quote scripture. This is Matthew 5. And I'll explain the context here in a second. But she says in this verse, the verse says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. I keep going. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. She put it out there. And so Ben Shapiro is going to respond to this. But essentially, the context of the verse is, blessed are the peacemakers. If people are talking bad about you, making peace is what Jesus is referring to. But the underlying context of the Sermon on the Mount is to flip the old laws on their head. Not that the Old Testament laws weren't valid. They're valid. But it's from the perspective of what God sees it and how man should see it. It's the heart. And the Sermon on the Mount starts to take the Old Testament and bring it into a new light. The laws are still the same, but the way we look at them and are perceiving them should be different. It's the way God sees them. And I think this really made Ben angry. I really do. Because there's multiple layers here of context. But ultimately, this is Candace Owens giving an olive branch to saying, hey, let's just calm this thing down. Of course, Ben doesn't want to do that. And he responds with this. Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, Quit. He missed the entire context here and just went off the rails, unhinged there. And so I have a saying that I say a lot is if the shoe fits, wear it. Meaning if it doesn't apply to you, don't worry about it. If it applies to you, well, then maybe you should consider it and make some changes. And so this here is incredibly over the top. And Candace Owens comes back and says this. You have been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. And we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it. So when you go out to Candace Owens, and by the way, Ben, you did start this. You got to expect Candace to come back. And I think her response was brilliant on different levels, as I explained. But again, more like an adolescent child, he doesn't handle it very well. And this is why Ben Shapiro is not popular at all, especially amongst America first conservatives, which is interesting because Zionism is essentially Israel first. So which means he's more or less a globalist. And I get look, he look, he's a Jew, an, uh, an active Jew. So he has the right to feel the way he feels passionately, this is a horrible situation. Hamas should be destroyed. I'm 100% with him on that. In fact, I'm with him on just about everything, but I'm not with him on his approach 
in his tactics in terms of going after Candace Owens' colleagues and people and just missing the boat and not being able to see that there's an other side to this where we both can be right on the same issue, but just in terms of tactically moving towards it is the discussion, which is why you shouldn't be shutting down dialogue because there's other ways to do the same thing and make it so that it is something where the free ideas are the ones that come forth and we can express those ideas and that's how real solutions happen. So, but in the past, we know Ben Shapiro has said things ridiculous. Like, you know, he said, you know, stuff about Trump and so forth and had to come back and say, well, I was wrong. This guy here says, if Ben Shapiro wants people to choose between him and Candace Owens, he's going to very quickly find out that we would almost all choose Candace Owens. I'll let you read this stuff here. This is just from here in the past of what Ben has said about how he would never vote for Trump, and here's why, and he's always never Trump, but then comes back and says, well, I support Trump now on these policies, and all of these things he's done in the past. He's actually said, you know what? Trump was 100% right, and I was 100% wrong when it comes to these tariffs. And so he is all over the place here, and so what's to say that he's not going to be six months from now saying Candace is right on these issues? So means that he is not thinking clearly and what's going on here with this Twitter feed, I don't know what's going on, but it's unprofessional and it's really, really off putting. It doesn't lead or anyone to actually want to side with him, even though we may agree with him on just about everything he's saying. So I think a little bit more tactfulness and a little bit more empathy of understanding and also a little bit less commie because he's coming at Ken Owens as if she doesn't have the right to express her own opinion. And so with that, give me your thoughts, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.